What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network here to bring you some more Pokemon Showdown live. I have made some really big changes to my team, the one that I did in the team building video. And like I told you guys, I'm going to be making these changes subtly, just depending on if I'm feeling certain factors in the battle or not, in terms of the team that is. And so now let me show you what I thought because let me show you what I did because I was really thinking about the team that I had had, you know, the one that you guys saw. And I was really saying to myself, what is going to be the goal of these guys? And you know, like what's their focus going to be? Like, you know, I had um, Togekiss in there and I had um, Chestnut and all that. And you know, it was all cool. I mean, they were cool individuals, but they never really had that synergy. They never really came together in my mind. So I was, I took some time. I really took some time to sit down and think, what do I want the goal of this team to be? What do I want the overall strategy to be? Who's going to be the damage dealers? Um, do I need um, clerics? Do I need any kind of like um, status? Of, and you know, all together, I came up with a really solid team, and this team has allowed me to position like 1,390 something. So you know, it's it's not that high of a position, but it's definitely an improvement over before, and I can definitely feel the team synergy there a lot more. So let's take a look at what I did really quick. The focus of this team, as you guys can see, will be around Galvantula and using um, and using um, Sticky Web. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Galvantula is a common Pokemon, and you know, I really hate that Sticky Web has such limited distribution, but that's all we got, so I figured I might as well deal with it. Galvantula is easily the best Sticky Webber in the game, and I figured that more than likely I would want to outspeed Greninja that are coming in, so I also threw a Choice Scarf on it, just in case to get that really fast Thunder off and KO the Greninjas off the bat, and in general to be a really fast Revenge Killer as well, because with, with the Choice Scarf, I mean, I know it's kind of weird to have status moves like Sticky Web on Choice Pokemon, but it works out really nicely, and um, especially in Galvantula's case, where it allows me to outspeed a lot of stuff and hit it really super... Um, hard with either Thunder or Hidden Power Ice. And I never really see too much flack from not being able to switch up moves midway because usually Galvantula is not meant to be in there too long anyways. So things worked out really nice there. Chestnut I really kept the same except for the fact that I got, actually I didn't really keep them the same. I love Chestnut as a Pokemon, I really do, so I wanted to change up the set a little bit, see what works better for me. And after experimenting with the Assault Death set, I didn't really like it too much, but um, I'm sorry about the noise, by the way. They're doing some fucking construction outside. I don't know what's going on. You know what? That shit is kind of loud. But um, with Chestnut, I basically wanted to... Okay, that's it. We're going to have to close the motherfucking window. What the hell kind of work are they doing outside? Jesus Christ, man. But... Anyways, now when it comes to Chestnut, I definitely wanted to keep that guy on the team. I, I love him as a Pokemon. And I actually had replaced the Assault Vest with just some regular old leftovers, but I gave him bulk up Synthesis Wood Hammer and Hammer Arm. So you know what, it's a little bit more standard, a little bit more regular, not as experimentative as um, the Assault Vest set. But I still like it, he has really good coverage with the stabs, you know, not really walled by too much, so it works out really great for me as a late game setup, because with the Sticky Web, he'll outspeed mostly everything. And then we have Blastoise in here, Water Spout, Aura Sphere, Dark Pulse, Rapid Spin, as you guys can see, I threw my own little twist on there with the water spout because thanks to the sticky whip, Mega Blastoise is usually outspeeding everything. And on top of it all, the coverage with Dark Pulse and Aura Sphere, man, the coverage with those two moves is really good. But then again, I always thought that it was Ghost and Fighting that had the good coverage, but Dark and Fighting seemed to do the job pretty damn well um, too. And then we have Rapid Spin in there, just in case, you know, and Rapid Spin has helped me a lot in the past with this team. It's really, because I've tested it a lot before, this Rapid Spin really does some work, so it works out really nicely for me. Then we have Whimsicott. Whimsicott now is supposed to be the pretty much the only setup on the team, kind of making opportunities for Pokemon to come in and do damage, or for Chestnut to come in and set up, or for Mega Blasters to come in and Rapid Spin, thanks to Encore, because if they come in and start setting up, go into Whimsicott real quick, hit them with that Encore, they're starting to set up their asses off, go into either Mamoswine, Emboar, Black... As you guys can see, this is a very tanky team. A team that really is made to probably take one or two hits and then retaliate with a ton of damage. That's usually the kind of teams that I make, but I really wanted to put an emphasis on that here. Whimsicott helps set that up, and just in case they don't get my sticky web up, or just in case my remaining members are slower than the opponent's team, I have the last minute, last resort trick room, just in case. Just in case shit gets real hairy. And it helps out, it really does. Leech Seat Substitute, I hate using Substitute, but Eh, you know, it's competitively viable and it does help in a lot of ways. I'm not even gonna lie here, so you know what I can do. Then we have Mamoswine. You know, Mamoswine is Mamoswine. I feel like a whore using this thing, but it's effective. 
the bulk, the, the ice and fire, um, thick fat resistances, the superpower, the ice shards. Man, Mammal Swine has it all, baby. The powerful stabs, hitting a lot of stuff, super effective, and life orb as well. Mammal Swine is a fucking problem, dude. And then we finally have Embor. Now this Embor set is pretty unique, but it's been working out for me so well. I love Embor. And if some of you may remember, I was actually using an Embor last generation, so I really wanted to see what one would be like in this gen. And so far, it's really working out nicely for me. Um, things are really cool with this Embor. I got Sucker Punch on him, which may seem kind of weird, but you guys will see. It comes into play to work out really nicely for me later on. It's good to have at least multiple forms of priority. Mamoswine, Embor with Sucker Punch, they both got Life Orbs. They do a lot of damage either way. Max Attack, Adamant, everything Max Attack and HP, you know? so. I think I spent enough time explaining this shit. Let's get into a battle. And now, also, since I've laddered so high, I've started to notice that the Pokemon I'm fighting are a lot more similar. You know, like for example, I'm seeing a lot of Rotom Washes now, which is a standard, I suppose. But you know, like as I get higher in the ladder rankings, it's like everyone's using the same fucking team now. It's crazy. Anyways, let's find a match with this new squad. Let's, let me show you guys how they do. Um, okay, here we go. So we got Weezing, Dark Chisel. He's probably going to try to leave with Greninja, but then again, he probably knows I'm going to leave with Galvantula. He knows I'm going to leave with Galvantula, so what would he want to leave with to um, stop Galvantula? He might want to leave with his Espeon. If he does leave with Espeon, you know what, whatever he leads with, Mega Blastoise wouldn't really have too much of a problem with it, I think. I don't think Mega Blastoise would have too much of a problem with whatever he wants to leave with. So, let's hit him, let's hit him somewhere where it's weird. You know what, now, let's go for something very strange, I see. Let's, let's go for let's go for Blastoise. Yeah, Blastoise might just be good. Oh oh whoop. <laughs> oh the sounds kinda loud. Uh okay, so now we got this um wheezing in there. Let's just go for the water spout off the bat. It's gonna do a ton of damage. Let's go for it. And um there we go, 100 percent baby! There we go! You see the power of water spout on Mega Blastoise? It's insane! It's insanity! Okay, so now he's going straight into his gray ninja. He's not playing around at all. He might just go for a U-turn, or he might just go for a Grass Knot. The Grass Knot is pretty damn obvious, so our Galvantula might be our best option here. Yeah, Grass Knot was pretty damn obvious, dude. And at this point now, he might just say, okay, let me stay in there and go for the Thunder. I mean, I mean, stay, stay in there and go for the Surf. I want to play this as safe as humanly possible. He's probably wondering, you know, why did he bring in his Galvantula so fast? I can just outspeed this piece of shit. But it's pretty risky for me to come in there and to just... If I if I try to go for a sticky web and he stays in and goes for a surf, I'm dead. I'm gonna lose my Galvantula that way. It's probably better if I just go for the safe thunder. He'll probably switch out the Garchomp. But I prefer that over losing Galvantula to some bullshit. Let's go for the thunder. Yeah, okay, that was a good move. Oh, wait, what? Oh, he's a grass type. I'm an idiot. I could have gone for the bug bug. <laughs> I totally forgot about Protein. Alright, that was dumb. That was extremely dumb. Alright, so now... Hmm, let's just go into Embor. You should be able to KO him with the Sucker Punch. That was so stupid. That was so stupid of me. I totally forgot about Protein. Alright, you guys just saw the biggest choke possible. <laughs> damn, even worse than not heel belling on the damn Vaporeon last game. Oh uh, man, alright, so that really worked out badly. But now we have Whimsicott here, who pretty much walls Garchomp very nicely, unless it has Fire Fang. But this Whimsicott is max HP, max defense, so we should be good there. Let's have him continuously go for the. Actually, you know what? He might just go for his. I'm seeing Espeon on every single OU team now. As I got higher in the ranking, all of a sudden Espeon, 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 Espeon. I'm seeing this thing everywhere, dude. What the hell's going on here? Is Espeon like. I know Magic Bounce and all that. You know how I see Espeon really being used? People are using Calm Mind and then maybe Baton passing those boosts or keeping the boost to Espeon and then that's going crazy with Psychic. And it's a very viable strategy because, you know, Espeon can't be switched out thanks to Roar. And it can't be Encore, so, you know, Espeon is the best Pokemon to use boosting moves, I suppose. Hmm. Now that we lost... Now that we lost my, um... My Galvantula, we have to kind of resort to last... We have to kind of resort to stuff like that. Yep, I knew Espeon was coming in, but, you know, I just wanted to be safe. At least the Lichy doesn't affect me, so I'm not too bothered by it. Now... 
Let's go in there with um, something that can maybe take a move. Hmm. It's probably going to start setting up a Calm Mind. If he does, I do have Embor at last resort to be able to um, sucker punch this guy. Let's go in there with Blastoise. I can hit this guy with a Dark Pulse. So maybe he won't set up a Calm Mind. I don't know. What, what does he want to do? I don't know what he wants to do. Maybe that's not a good move. Maybe it might just be better to... Oh, well, they made it for me already. Okay. Yeah, Calm Mind's coming. I'm seeing Espeon everywhere, dude. I'm seeing these things so much now. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. I might just lose Blastoise here, but it's no problem since Vaporeon pretty much walls it. So, I can give up Blastoise and still manage to get some damage on the Espeon unless he has Sunlight. I mean, what is that um, healing move there? Um, Moonlight? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be that Stored Power Espeon thing. Will he be able to kill me with the Stored Power at this point? Nah, that's an Omega Blastoise, baby. That thing is way too bulky for you to kill me with that. He probably doesn't have max special defense. He probably has max defense because he didn't take that too well at all. Let's just go for a Dark Pulse here. The Bullet Punch will not be able to kill me. I'll be able to outrun this thing. Or rather, should I play it safe and go for Embor? Yeah, going for Embor is the safest option. I don't want to risk anything. Bug Bites, Quad, resisted by Embor, so I don't have a problem with that. And your Bullet Punch isn't really going to do much either. So we're probably better off going for the Wild Charge in there since, you know, Va Vaporeon is a thing. Yeah, let's go for the Wild Charge. It's the safest option. Guard Chisel. Oh, boy, I totally forgot about you. Okay, that was a odd move to make on my part. Go for Whimsicott again. Just because you can take those earth the Earthquakes really damn well. And we can possibly get a Leak Seed off, you know? So, like I was saying, guys, this team has a lot more synergy. Not only for the fact that we do have the, the Fire... Um, grass and Water Core and Mega Blastoise, Embor, and Chestnut, or Whimsicott if you would like. Now you might be wondering why I'm not trying to play Chestnut too early. It's because this guy is pretty much meant for late game setup and to just to clean up, but not in the fast sweeper talent thing kind of way, but more in the... Oh, the Iron Head! Nice prediction! I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That was clean. That was clean as fuck. But I am still... Oh, but then again, that would have been the safest move because he probably thought I was going to go into maybe Mammoth Swine or my Whimsicott. So that was cool. The Iron Head on the damn um, Garchomp. That's pretty sick. Let's go for a Leech Seed. Oh, critical hit? How much did the Iron Head do before? It did 50%, so I guess he would have KO'd me either way. But now that we have this guy Leech Seeded, this is a very good opportunity to go maybe into um, Chestnut, perhaps. Because then again, what does this guy have for me? He has, um... What does he have? He has... He has um, Earthquake, he has Iron Head, probably a Dragon move, maybe a Fire move. If he had a Fire move, he probably would have used it against um, Wimsicott. So maybe I can go into Chestnut now and set up a little bit. You know what, let's try it. Let's go into Chestnut and set up. This is kind of a risky play, but I kind of want to just go in there with Chestnut to see what it can do for me, you know? So we're going to go for that, that bulk up. Alright, so we already got our defense up now. Let's go for another bulk up. Mega Scizor. Bug Bites. I'm going to do, do a pretty good amount of damage, but um, I'm not too bothered by it. Um, let's go for one more bulk up. This is probably going to Sword Dance, and then we'll be able to probably kill him with the Hammer Arm at this point. Hopefully we'll be able to kill him with the Hammer Arm. My Chestnut doesn't have that much attack investment. It has just enough attack to make it so that its attack is 300. So... I'm hoping that we'll be able to KO him with this. If we're not, it's pretty much a good game. Let's hit him with the hammer arm. Bug bite, 44%. Damn, hammer arm still not able to kill this guy. Okay, so um, we're pretty much good. He's probably going to go for the bullet punch, which... Oh, oh, okay, good. Ch <laughs> great, that's fine with me. Hammer arm is able to take down Scizor. That's great. And now we have um, Chestnut in the base. Probably not going to be able to live what the Garchomp wants to do. So... And it's A-OK. -okay. It is it's totally fine. We're going to go in there with the... Um, let's go for a synthesis, just in case we do manage to live something. Okay, he's going to go straight for the Outrage. But this is fine, because this means that Amazon can come in on this guy. Hopefully he doesn't have something that'll resist ice, you know? That, that would really suck. But then again, I'm, I'm betting that my Mamoswine can take an Outrage from this guy. I'm hoping that it can. But it really doesn't matter too much because this guy is going to get KO'd by this Ice Shard here. Unless he has like a berry to um, negate the ice damage. Uh, okay, he does. Good. So Garchomp is down. This is really nice. Like I told you guys, I feel like a whore for using Mamoswine because Mamoswine is a really, 
really good Pokemon. But, hey, what are you gonna do, you know? Uh, we got this Vaporeon in here. We might as well just go straight for the Earthquake. I'm not sure if we'll outspeed it. Probably outspeed it. Okay, that did a lot of damage. God damn. And, um, let's just finish this game up, man. This is pretty much going to be it. Hmm. Some so Okay, so some sloppy plays were made there. Um, but then again, it was kind of unpredictable for the Garchomp to go on for the Iron Head on Whimsicott. I, I totally didn't see that coming. And um, it was really stupid for me to go for the Thunder on the Greninja, totally forgetting about Protean. That was definitely the dumbest move of the game. That, that sucked. But um, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. That was a very interesting game. And tell me what you think of the new team. I like this team a lot. This is probably going to be a standard team. I'm probably going to make this team for my Wi-Fi battles because it works out really nicely. It has great coverage, a good general strategy. And if I'm playing on top of the team, I can usually compete with some really high frequency players. So it, it's fine. This team has some really good stuff going for it. But I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Take care of yourselves. And of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.